Okay, so welcome to the first episode in the Isometric Tactics tutorial series. Uh, first of all, we're going to be making our own room editors. This is going to be really useful for any other game that you're going to make, uh, whether it's 2D or isometric. Um, although you don't always need your own room editor, it can be useful to know how to do it. Um, this particular episode is going to show you how to make a grid, um, 2D grid, how to uh, display what the grid shows and how to uh, edit the grid to make your own simple maps. Um, and it's all going to be in 2D. Uh, we're going to get into isometric on the next episode. This one's just going to cover the basics so you know kind of what's going on under the hood. Anyway, so if you make a room or you go into the room that's already there in a new project and uh, the room height and width is 480 for the width by the height of 270, uh, viewports are enabled, uh, view width and height matches the room, 480 by 270 and we have a viewport of 960 by 540 which is exactly double the width and height of the view and the room. Uh, make an object called OBJ editor. Make sure you put it inside the room and we're going to need a few sprites. Uh, make a sprite called SPR floor and we want four images. Uh, first one's going to be blank uh, and then number one is going to be grass, two is going to be snow and three is going to be water. So if we go into the create event if you make a create event for OBJ editor and we're going to have a region called set up a grid and we're going to have two variables called H cells and V cells. Uh, H cell stands for horizontal cells, V cells stands for vertical and we're going to use this function to make a grid called DS terrain data and it's going to be 10 across and 10 down which will give us 100 cells. Uh, if you're kind of familiar with uh, 2D arrays, then grids grids work in the same way, except you can do more with them. For example, they can be more dynamic and they are easier to save. What happens when you create a grid is every cell, every entry uh, gets set to zero. Um, if we left it like that and we try to draw it, we're going to be using this sprite and we're going to be drawing uh, index zero, which is blank. Uh, we don't want to start with a blank map. I want to start with grass. So I'm going to use a double for loop. I'm going to set every entry in the grid to one, which is zero one, which is going to give us grass. Uh, so that's what this double for loop is going to do. All this is going to do is set every entry in the grid to one. Uh, why do we need to use a hashtag? Because that's what's called the accessor for the grid. If we just didn't have the, uh, the hashtag, it's going to try and read it as a 2D array, which we don't want. So we need to have that to show it's a grid. Um, and that's it for this region. Okay, so now we actually want to draw what we just set up. If we go into the draw event of OBJ editor, we want to use the exact same two lines for the double for loop. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going from every cell, every step, and we're going to uh, save what's stored inside each cell in index. And then uh, index is going to equal uh, one every time. But uh, when we come to change it, it could equal zero, one, two or three. Um, and then we're just going to draw this sprite in a different position. 100 times because there's 100 cells that's what it's going to do uh, and then the index whatever is stored in here so just in case you don't know what's going on with the double full loop i have created a masterful piece of artwork so this is the x axis this is the y axis uh, when the double full loop starts it's going to be on x zero y zero then it's going, going to go to x1, y0, x2, y0, blah, 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 
until it gets to x9, x0. Then it's going to go here. It's going to see if it can go here, but it can't because uh, h cells is 10. And the for loop only goes up to less than h cells. It's going to go to y1, x0. Then it's going to be x1, y1, x2, y1, all the way to here. And then it's going to see, can we go to x10? No, we can't. So y2, blah, blah, blah. It's going to draw every cell like that. And this is actually, um, this is actually how you normally would draw isometric tiles as well. You start on the top left, do all the ones on the horizontal, then go down a row, draw, draw all of these ones. That's how uh, most people I've seen do it. And that's how I tend to do it as well. Okay, so uh, once you have this code down, let's run the game. And you should end up with a big green rectangle like this. So as long as you've got that, you are in the same place as I am. And we will now edit what we have. Okay, so now we are going to do some more coding, a little bit of coding, just so we can actually change the map. Uh, first of all, though, uh, we're going to create some new variables in the create event. We want to have a new region called extra variables and we want to have grid X, grid Y and new index. Grid X and Y is going to tell us where the mouse is in relation to the grid. So, for example, if the mouse is, is oops, if the mouse is over here, then it's going to tell us the grid X is five and grid Y is three. If the mouse is over here, it's going to be grid X three, grid Y six, etc etc and new index is basically so you remember that every every cell is is uh, has an entry stored in the grid uh, when we click the mouse we want to change the value stored in the grid and therefore it will draw something different at the moment every value is set to one say for example we have the mouse here and we click then cell 53 um, if new index equals two, then five, three is going to be two. The rest of them are still going to be one unless we move our mouse over that cell, click it, then this value is also going to become a two like that. And because these values are now two rather than one, then 0, 1, 2, this cell is going to be drawn, or this, this sprite, sorry, is going to be drawn, this index of the sprite, and that's how we're going to get a different visual display. All right, so now you've got these three new variables, we actually need to set them, or we're going to do grid X and grid Y for now, and then draw it, just so you can see this in action. So grid X is going to equal the floor of mouse X, divided by grid size, mouse X is going to return wherever the the, uh, X, the mouse is on the X plane and mouse Y is going to return wherever the mouse is on the Y plane in the room. Um, and then grid size is 16. So say for example, mouse X was 32 in the room, divide that by grid size of 16, it's going to return two. So grid X will equal two. Uh, if mouse y was 16 divided by grid size that will return 1 uh, but obviously um, it could be 18 and then it's going to have a remainder of 2 so if we want to floor it to get 16 otherwise it's going to give us some weird coordinates for our grid and it's going to mess us up that's why we need to floor it uh, and then we also want to make sure that we don't have values uh, less than 0 or greater than 9 because we could move the mouse outside the grid. Uh, that would give us a wrong value. So we're going to use the clamp function to make sure grid X and grid Y stay between zero and nine, like that. So now you've done that, uh, we want to go into OBJ editor, 
draw GUI event and we're going to have this region. This is just for testing purposes, just so you can see grid X and grid Y change. So make sure you've got these four lines. And then just run the game. So you can see wherever we move the mouse, grid X and grid Y change based on where it is. And if we do something a bit more visual, if you make a sprite called SPR cursor like this, 16 by 16, uh, just grab a yellow, use this rectangle bit, draw a rectangle shape, and then choose a darker color and draw one on the inside. That's all you have to do. And then we're gonna draw that sprite in the draw event. So this region in the draw event is gonna be underneath the draw cell. We're gonna draw the cursor. We're gonna say inside this double for loop, if xx equals grid x and yy equals grid y, we want to draw the cursor. So um, if grid x equals five and grid y equals five, that would be over here. We only want to draw the mouse cursor when the, when the four loops get to this position. That's what this means. So if we run the game now, You can see we've got a cursor, a better visual aid. And as long as you have something like that, then you are in the place that you should be at. Okay, so just close this down. So back to the step event. We don't need this anymore. We, we can minimize this. So we're going to want to change the index. So the value that we just created here is set to one initially. We want to be able to change this. Um, so if we press VK right, if, uh, if new index plus one is less than the total number of indexes in this sprite, then increase it by one. Otherwise, set it to zero. So basically, all we're, all we're checking if uh, new index is here and we add one to it, is that okay? Yes, it is. If new index is here and we add one to it, is that okay? No, it's not. So it's going to go, go back to zero. That's all that those lines of code are doing. This bit. And here, if we press left, if new index, if new index is greater than zero, then minus one from it. Otherwise, go to the very far right index. So for example, if new index is here, can we take away one from it? Yes, we can. If new in the index is here, can we take away one from it? No, we can't. So we're going to go all the way back up to here. So that's how they're going to change. Um, let's also display that happening. So in draw GUI, we're going to have a new region called draw new index. Uh, grab these three values. And all we're going to do is we're going to draw whatever index, new indexes uh, around the bottom middle of the screen. So just run the game again once you've got this. And you should have something like this at the bottom. If we press left and right on our cursor keys, it should change like that. And this is going to give us a heads up of what we are going to change on the map. Okay, so we are going to uh, go into the step event now and we're going to paint the map, this region. So if we hold down the mouse button, left button, we want to set whatever uh, cell grid X and grid Y is inside the grid to new index. So if new in index equals 3 and grid X equals 2, and grid y equals one, then cell two one will equal three. So cell two one, that one will equal three. 
that's what this is going to do. Uh, and then, yeah, let's just let's just run the game, paint the map, map a bit, just so you can see how this works. And then we'll show the numbers as well. So I've changed it to snow. I'm holding down left mouse, and then change it to water up here, and then uh, we'll have a chasm or something in the middle. And then back to grass. And that's how the edit is going to work, basically. It's going to be the same for the isometric, but I just want to show you guys a basic 2D editor for now. So I'll make sure you've got that. And then back in the draw cell region, we're going to have a testing region. This is going to show uh, whatever number is stored inside uh, XX and YY of the S train data. So we want to set the horizontal alignment as FA left and vertical alignment from FA top. So it's going to be drawn from the top left. Uh, draw set color gray. And we're just going to draw, like I said, whatever index is 0, 1, 2, or 3. We're going to draw it as a number uh, just so we don't have a, a string clash. We're going to comment out the grid X, grid Y stuff inside the draw GUI for now. Okay, so run the game. And you should now see this, a load of ones, because that's what the index is. If we change current index and start painting, then we get a load of twos, change it to water, get a load of threes, change it to chasm, we get a load of zeros. So this is how the data stored inside the grid is correlating to the visual display. Uh, that's very important for you to know uh, because when we come to do the isometric part with different heights, uh, you need to know this, understand this part in order to grasp the next bit. So uh, hopefully you are in the same position as me. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, but until next time, I will say bye. That was bad. No. But anyway. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. It's uh, it's not a bad primer for taking us into isometrics. Um, I will catch you next time. Bye for now. No, one more time. Okay, so... Uh, if you have... Hopefully you are... One more time. Hopefully you have the exact same result that I do. Um, any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm always happy to answer them. Uh, I think this was a good introduction to an editor. Um, but uh, we'll get into more interesting stuff next time. But until then, bye for now.